Lots of history being made today. And the U.S. presidential inauguration means more opportunities for political discourse. And of course, there are right and wrong ways to go about that. So how can you best handle situations if conversations turn to politics today? Eric Rittmeyer is a former U.S. Marine and an expert on both emotional intelligence and or mental toughness. He's joining us with some tips for handling this. Thanks for joining us this morning. Good morning. Thanks for having me. I love that yellow. We match here, don't we? I like Thank this. Thank you. There you go. <laughs> All right. Help us with this. It has been difficult to have conversations right now. And of course, that's not going to magically go away because Inauguration Day is today. It's not, unfortunately. So what we're, what we're living in right now is this nation that we're just intoxicated in emotion, meaning that we're so overcome with emotion that we're incapable of logical thought processes. So moving forward, it all starts with getting those emotions under control and being willing and able to accept an opposing point of view. We often get a lot better at that. Certainly. And then you have to know kind of the things that get you upset so you can be prepared for people to say them to you, right? It's these triggers we have, right? We all have these triggers. It's something someone says or something they do. If we're aware of the triggers, if we know that trigger's been pulled, we're better able to keep our emotions under control. The problem is a lot of times we don't know when that trigger's been hit. And then when it is pulled, everything that follows, it's going to be emotion-based, which means we're going to say and do things we're definitely going to regret afterwards. Yeah, and how do you teach yourself to respond to people? If they say something that you don't believe is true, if they say something that's offensive, how can you respond? Yeah, and this, this is difficult to do because, you know, we're hardwired as humans to feel first and think later. So when something happens, when we react, it's emotion based. It's how we feel at that moment. So a reaction is when it's tied to an emotion. When we respond, we're able to process information logically, and then we can formulate a response that is going to be more in tune with the other person, not be something that's going to upset anybody. So reacting is based in emotion. Responding is based in logic. And then let's talk about things that we believe are true that just are not. We see so much of this going on right now in conversations people have with their family and friends who kind of affirm those wrong beliefs. Then we also see it on social media. How do we become as a society where we can listen to something and say, okay, I was wrong about what I thought was true? Emphasis on listen, right? So as a society now, we're listening with the intent to reply, not with the intent to understand. So we listen just long enough to formulate our response. Then once we have a response, everything after that becomes Charlie Brown talk. So we have to get a lot better at listening, and we also have to get better at suspending our disbeliefs. We have to be willing to set those things aside, hear that person out. At the end of the day, we don't have to agree. We just want to make the other person feel like, I heard you, I understand you, I disagree with you, but I at least heard what you're saying. Sure. And then I know you want to talk about your emotions not being hijacked. I think we all know someone where you go, oh, don't mention this around him or her, right? They're going to get so upset. <laughs> Right. When our emotions, you know, there's not much we have control of these days, right? I mean, the majority of things that happen to us, we have no control over. The one thing we do have total control over are our thoughts, are our emotions. So although we can't stop what's happening outside, we can control what's happening inside, which are our emotions and our reactions to things. So it's all about keeping the emotion under control, not trying to turn it off, not trying to suppress it, just learning to control it. It's easier said than done, unfortunately. That's right. And since you are an expert on emotional intelligence, do you feel that people's emotional intelligence has really changed over time. I hear people say that people have changed over time, that social media has changed people. Are people different or are the platforms we have to express ourselves different? And I don't know that emotional intelligence has changed. I feel like there's just such a lack of it. You know, I feel like our nation right now, IQ and EQ are inversely related. So I feel like the higher IQ someone is, the lower EQ they are. The problem is we have no training on this. We're not taught emotional intelligence skills. So we go through school, we memorize, regurgitate, we get thrown out into the workforce. Somebody says something we don't like. We don't have any tools on how to respond to them. So what do we do? We get angry, we get aggressive, we get very mad at these people. We have to teach, especially our kids, emotional intelligence skills so they can handle adversity and deal with people they don't agree with. All right, Eric Rittmeyer, thank you so much for joining us this morning. I see you've got your book right behind you, The Emotional Marine. We'll tell everybody to read that for more information on this. Thank you for having me. Have a wonderful day. I appreciate it. All right, thanks.